Thank you very much. I would like to thank um, Six May Committee and the Committee of the Syrian uh, Expats in the Netherlands for inviting me in this important event. And I would like also to thank Ruben and Rima for this great organization. It's a, such a honor to me to speak in front of you. We all know that uh, Aleppo since uh, mid-2012 was targeted by uh, the war and uh, a lot has been said about Aleppo. But what happened really in the last at least four years in Aleppo? I would like to today explain a little bit what happened, uh, what these so-called rebels that are supported by many Western governments did in Aleppo in order to uh, destroy the infrastructure of Aleppo and push away or expel many uh, pro-government Syrians who were the source of strength for uh, the Syrian government and the Syrian army in order to resist since the mid of 2012 until the victory in uh, December 2016. So, as I mentioned, uh, even though the war erupted in Syria in 2011, but it didn't really affect Aleppo until mid-2012. And at that time, Islamist militants, uh, especially from uh, the suburbs of Aleppo, a lot of people don't know this, that the people of Aleppo inside the city, uh, who are the majority, they resisted and they were against this so-called revolution. And at many times, they were cursed and being called many uh, dirty words because they didn't join. Uh, this so-called revolution. And even when the protests started in uh, Aleppo, especially in, inside the university, the vast majority of the protesters were not Aleppis. Uh, at that time, in uh, mid-June, July 2012, uh, Liwa Tawhid, the so-called Free Syrian Army, they stormed uh, eastern parts, uh, the neighborhoods of Aleppo, and they succeeded to occupy a few neighborhoods. At that time, I have to be honest with you, there was uh, um, people inside the government who were working with uh, the opposition at that time, and this guy who defected and he escaped to Turkey, he was killed later on on the borders with uh, Turkey. But the people of Aleppo, what did they do when this Islamist came? Many people think that, okay, they just lived with them. No, there was a mass, uh, let's say, uh, expulsion of the people from uh, eastern part of uh, the city to the western part of the city. Around 500,000 people, they came to West Aleppo to take refuge in West Aleppo in uh, under the government-held areas. So, since June, July 2012 and up till December 2016, the city has been divided into two parts. The east, which was inhabited by 120,000 Aleppis only. The Western mainstream media claims that there were around 360,000. From this 120,000 people, when uh, the Syrian army liberated uh, East Aleppo, only 20,000 people who were the militants and their families chose to go to Idlib. The rest, the 100,000 people, they chose to stay and live with the Syrian government again, whether in East Aleppo or in Western Aleppo. But during the occupation times, Western Aleppo was uh, inhabited by around 1.5 million Aleppis. So since 2012, when these so-called rebels occupied the eastern parts, they launched on a daily basis missiles, mortars, and gas containers. Uh, they call it hell cannons, filled with explosives and nails into West Aleppo, causing the death of 11 thousand civilians. I'm talking about only civilians now. 11,000 civilians were dead by these mortars, all the hell cannons, and their names are all documented in the Syrian hospitals. Not like the, when the mainstream media says there is a genocide, there is a mass murdering, and there is no documentation, no names, no pictures, no videos. No, the names are all documented in the uh, Aleppo hospitals. Now, beside these mortars, what were the policy of the rebels, the so-called rebels in Aleppo? First, they used the kidnapping of civilians. From, especially from the middle class and upper middle class people, they used to 
detained, captured these people, and they called their parents asking for ransom. And the ransoms varied between $1,000 up to $20,000. The second policy of the militants, they occupied the industrial cities. This is very important. Aleppo is one of the biggest industrial cities in was, unfortunately, in the Middle East. They occupy your factory, they dismantle it, they put it on the tracks, they send it to Turkey. And in Kilis, in Gaziantep, in Hatay region, when they uh, took this, big, your factory is there, they call you back because they know this is your factory and they negotiate with you. Okay, this factory is very high tech and it costs one million dollar. We sell you back your factory for five hundred thousand dollars. Accept it or not. If you don't, they will be happily sell it in Turkey to Turkish businessmen. And many Syrian and Aleppo factories are now installed inside Turkey and they are working and operating inside Turkey and because they were uh, bought by Turkish businessmen. Uh, I will show you now a video how they take this uh, to Turkey. It's as easy as this. They put everything on the tracks, just send it to Turkey. This is on the borders with Turkey. You see, even the flag is or, already for the so-called Free Syrian Army flag, and they are sending the Syrian factories, instead of trying to attract the people of Aleppo to join their revolution, they were looting the Aleppo's factories and send them to Turkey. Around 1,150 factories, very high-tech and heavy factories, were looted from Aleppo. Okay, now the hell cannons. We all, I'm sure, we all heard about the barrel bombs that the mainstream media, every time you open your channel, barrel bombs falling in Aleppo, everywhere. People are dying by the barrel bombs. How many people heard about the hell cannons in the, by the Western mainstream media? Of the Western media coverage of the conflict. Now, hell cannons are an indiscriminate weapon used by these Islamist militants which causes terror and civilian damage and loss of life. The hell cannon is initially a weapon of desperation which has both become and remains a mainstay of the Islamist arsenal and an increasingly lethal threat in militants' offenses. It was first uh, founded by uh, so-called Ahrar al-Shamal. This is a picture of uh, the hell cannon. They even have a recipe for you if you want to order uh, their hell cannons. They can buy and sell and everything. Uh, the, the specifications of this uh, hell cannon, it can fire more than 15 types of shells uh, that weigh more than 40 kilograms. It also has two locally made rocket launchers. They call it Rohingya. The range of uh, the, these missiles are 1.5 kilometers. Uh, the effectiveness is up to 200 square meters. The projectile is a uh, propane gas cylinder. Cost of the shell is only $30. By $30, they might kill more than 10 or 20 people by one shot. <laughs> the country of origin is the uh, Ahrar Shamal battalions. Also, I, I want to show you a video of this um, uh, hell cannons, but I will raise the voice a little bit of this, or I don't know. Yeah. Okay. This is indiscriminate weapon that they, sh they always say in the name of God, and they shoot.
tens of these hell cannons were falling every day in Aleppo, every day. This is a school. And they say it in the video. In the middle of the school. He said it. They are praising God for killing civilians in Aleppo. <coughs> 